Parker Brothers begins selling the board game Monopoly in the U.S. of A. Richard Hopman is convicted and sentenced to death for the kidnapping and murder of Charles Lindbergh Jr. Oh yeah, an alcoholic anonymous was founded in Akron, Ohio, which if you've ever been to scenic Akron, Ohio, there is a time of year where the sun sets and we don't get to see it for a while. And the weather is kind of crappy and just overcast for a month. Anyway, the year is 1935. And this absolutely stunning car that has more presence than just about anything that's new and on sale today was on offer at luxury brand Pierce Arrow. But I'm Jay. Welcome to What She Like. I mean, What It's Like. The automotive channel that covers classics, vintage, some exotics. This channel is home of the Orphan Cars engine episodes on Wednesday. We dive in deep on the history, button switches and knobs, specs. Most importantly, show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This absolutely stunning 1935 Pierce Arrow seven passenger town sedan is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania with over 900 cars for sale when recording this episode with financing and shipping available. Also, if you have a classic car that you would like to sell, they can sign cars and take the headaches out of selling cars. Anybody can peruse their inventory for more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this very car. Be sure to click the link below after the show. Pierce Arrow was a luxury car brand manufacturer based in Buffalo, New York, founded by George and Pierce. It's important to note that Pierce Arrow wasn't the first company that George Pierce was involved in. He and two other associates established the Heinz Pierce Molsheimer Company in 1865. And they made household items. Believe it or not, their claim to fame was their gilded bird cages. In 1872, George Pierce would buy the other two out of their company shares and would rename the company the George N. Pierce Company. They were still making household items at that point in time. In 1896, they got into making bicycles. The first car attempt came in 1900. They were going to build a steam car that was licensed under Overman. In 1901, Pierce would build his very first car, which had a single cylinder, two-speed transmission with no reverse, called the Motorette. Pierce Arrow would build bicycles, motorcycles, boats, luxury cars, trucks, fire trucks, and even camping trailers called Travel Lodge. These are so cool. If you know where there is one, shoot me a message in the comment section. I would love to feature a travel lodge on the channel. Built cars from 1901 to 1938. Fun fact, Studebaker would own Pierce Arrow for five years between the years of 1928 and 1933. Pierce Arrow didn't make a junior or a watered-down version of their car. For example, Packard made a junior line in 1937. They offered the basement Packard 115C. They also offered the 120, which was a step up, still on the junior line. The decision to make a junior series was the reason Packard survived the Great Depression years. Pierce Arrow chose not to go down that road. Sales were poor because the cars were premium priced at a time where very few people had money. The company declared insolvency in 1938 and closed its doors, but the factory that built the V12 engines was bought by Seagrave Fire Apparatus and would use the heart of the Pierce Arrow in fire trucks for years to come. 1935 Pierce Arrow model lineup. Model 845 Deluxe 8, which rides a wheelbase of either 139 or 144 inches. That one is powered by an eight-cylinder engine. The other two models have a V12, Model 12, 45 Saloon 12, which could ride a wheelbase of 139 inches or 144 inches. At the top was Model 1255 Custom 12, which rode the longest wheelbase 147 inches model 845 could be had as a silver arrow coupe 
Coupe Roadster, Club Brome, Five Passenger Club, Five Passenger Sedan, Limo, and Seven Passenger Touring Sedan. Let's talk specs. It rides a wheelbase of either 134 or 144 inches. I think this one's on the 144 inch wheelbase, but I could be wrong. It weighs 5,987 pounds. Price, $2,995, which is equivalent to you spending $67,260.92 the year 2023. Total 1935 Pierce Aero production was 875 units across all three models and all of the different body styles. Moving on to engine, only one engine on offer for the 845. That was the 385 cubic inch displacement L head eight. 6.3 liters. It's good for 140 horsepower at 3,400 RPM, an estimated 216 pound feet or 292 Newton meters at around 1,800 RPM. Bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 5 inches. It is backed with a three speed manual transmission. Just wow, where do you start? I guess we'll start right here. Just notice how. These headlights are sculpted into the fenders themselves. It's a Pierce Arrow trademark. Also, just look at how this comes down. It curves, rolls underneath. This whole design right here. There's so much going on with this design. Bumpers, how they curve. These points. Also, look at how it dips down. Beautiful. Pierce Arrow accessory lights. It even says Pierce Arrow in it. Safety light. This grill is thermostatically operated and it will open when the engine needs cooled. Once the engine is at running temperature, it closes to allow the air to not drag the car down. Horns, dual horns on each side as well as accessory lights. Just look at how this has this bead that goes over the wheel well. Nice spoke wheels. Pierce Arrow 8, which also tells you that this has an eight cylinder engine under the hood. Take a look at that absolutely gorgeous mascot. Coming down the side, these are heat extractors and or louvers, which you open up manually. But just notice all of the textured effect going on here, as well as It's just such a quality piece. Pinstriping. This car has a cowl vent, single piece windshield with the windshield wipers at the top. So it might crank out. Mirror is located right here on the side. It does not have drip rails. Has, it's a flared out ever so slightly right there. Just check out how this fender comes back. It's absolutely massive here. I wear size 12 shoe, so that's what it looks like in the front. It does taper in the back, but my shoe can still fit mostly on the running board. The rear fenders have a bead that go on the outline of the wheel well. Also check out the trim at the bottom of the running boards. Beautiful door handles. As well as the windows look like they're pressed in. This has that Landau that um, coaches had back in the day. Gas filler cap lights it's 
spare tire as well as more lights the rear bumpers aren't as opulent as the front bumpers but they're still really nice it doesn't dip down nearly as far either but they still have the pointiness that the front ones had getting inside this door is quite large and it has a little bit of heft to it the wood around the frame door handle to get out window crank for the big window operates like that window crank for the massive vent window which operates like that this car has an armrest look at all of this plating as well as look at it's all textured very quality piece check out this seat and how thick it is also the wood on top flower vases on both sides coming down inside the pedal box which all the pedals come out of the floor if clutch brake gas pedal look at the brake pedal it's a lot like the gas pedal which is interesting take a gander at this interior before getting inside just look at how far you have to go to get inside oh wow Here is what over the hood looks like. It is absolutely gorgeous in this car. Here is what first person over the hood looks like. On to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right. His glove box and or driver's glove box. Free wheeling control. Optional gauge. That is actually where the radio goes if you opted to get the radio. Coolant temperature, oil pressure, speedometer with odometer and trip. The S, I believe that one is for the starter, but I could be wrong. Headlights, amp meter, gasoline gauge, clock, lighter, her glove box slash passenger glove box. They really need to bring back his and her glove boxes. Just saying. Up above, there aren't any sun visors, but this is for the windshield wipers and rear view mirror. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question, which I've already opened it. Look at that. And that's why I show this, because it doesn't look like it'd be that big, but it's absolutely huge, and it shuts. Getting in the rear. Oh man, just look at all of the wood. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. Operates like this and it goes the whole way down. You also have pockets back here to store whatever you wanted to in the side. Take a look at this interior back here. This car has the jump seats, which fold out of this compartment here. And that's what the jump seat would look like. It's got two jump seats, one on each side. This is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio. That's what visibility looks like out the back. There is not really a parcel shelf, but there is an armrest here that comes down. There is a ton of creature comforts back here. For starters, there's, there's lights back here. Three lights to be exact, there's one there. There's one in the center, and there's one over here. There is an ashtray, as well as cigarette pocket, or at least that's what I'm gonna call it. Armrest here. Notice there isn't a window here. So it makes it very private. The lighter is over here, another pocket in the side. 
as well as this is the light switch for all three lights I'm assuming pockets but just look at how much space you have I'm six foot two and I can't even well I can barely touch the back of that seat there is a foot rest here this is what I look like sitting in the back I got tons of headroom if I had the money I would I would totally buy this car it's it's so nice I'm not gonna lie this is a really really heavy hood you just unlatch it by moving these and then this folds up this arm folds up to stop it but there's there it is beautiful inline pierce straight eight it's got a downdraft carburetor air cleaner there On the positive side, rare, in just about every body style slash model, fine engineered high speed touring cars, CCCA classic status against it, expensive to buy, operate and restore and with each passing year, engine parts, body parts, special trim parts are getting harder and harder to come by. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1935 Lincoln Model K four-door sedan or 1935 Pierce Arrow 845 four-door sedan or 1935 Packard Super 8 four-door sedan? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1935 Cadillac V8 four-door sedan or 1935 Pierce Arrow 845 four-door sedan or 1936 Cord 810 which is the non-supercharged model four-door sedan. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free. Pause the video. Name that tune. First person to give both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. I couldn't think of a better song for this car. And if you haven't caught on, if I had the money, I would totally buy this car in a heartbeat. It's the type of car that I'm still thinking about. And it's been a couple days since shooting this. Anyway, thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook and would like to send me something more intimate, send me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section. And until next time, toodaloo!